continuation of the Lawton Living Family Chronicles in History. And I thought it would be a very good opportunity to sit down with the three Pressman girls and interview them and ask them questions about their recollections as to growing up and what life was and being a, a Pressman. So uh, we roll had it. <laughs> roll it. <laughs> At the table before, when we were finishing up brunch, there was a great deal of discussion as to who would start off and who would be the first to speak. So, the eldest. Okay. No, you were the first to speak, Mom. We all had guessed that. Uh, so, Aunt Molly is the oldest. Why don't we start with uh, Aunt Molly and, and tell us a little bit of what Who said was I'm the oldest? Uh, let, me, let me bring up a question that was uh, discussed uh, when I was interviewing my mother and Jack a couple of weeks ago. My mother said that uh, in, when you were growing up, that you would rather that your parents would have rather moved than paint and that you move very frequently. Tell us a little bit about that time in your life when you were moving instead of painting, and, and why, would, why would you have moved instead of painting? Um, the neighborhoods changed. Uh, we went to a school. I can remember painting when we were, came out of um, public school, and we were ready for junior high school. We moved from 43rd Street. Charlotte wasn't born at the time. Oh, we, I don't remember. Yes, we moved from 43rd down to 40th. That was before my time. Wasn't I born on 40th? Oh, you mean no. 40th and 16th? 40th oh, and 16th. Yeah. That's where Charlotte was born. That's where Charlotte was born. And we continued going to that school, although Mo had to go all the way up 13th Avenue to the Yeshiva. Yeah. And, um, we lived there in 1927. I don't think Charlotte was born then yet. Where were you? No. Yeah. And uh, that's where you had, I slept with you when you had the typhoid fever. fever. fever and I slept with her in the same bed. Yes. I didn't get it. There was a, it was a very large bedroom. Mo had a single One bed minute. against the wall. We had well, a double bed. You're not bed. answering the question. Uh, <laughs> get back to why, why did we moved? the pa wait? We what? moved. Uh, I don't think it was because of painting. I can recall having the apartment <laughs> painted, but we moved so that we we would be nearer our schools. We moved from there because I went to junior high school on 18th Avenue, and we moved on the same street. But didn't you always grow up in Borough Park? It was considered Borough Park. So how, how much of a move would there be, and why would you have moved because of the school systems? The uh, schools? Not only that, we moved wherever the relatives moved. Right. Uh, Grandpa Eddie's, your Grandpa Eddie, our father Eddie, his sister moved to that street for the same reason that her girls were going to the same junior high school. So we were three families. That's right. There was Max Kaufman and his family. He, he moved to 18th Avenue. And then uh, we moved. Okay. It seems as if the, the three families, the Edelsteins and the Pestons. And, and we followed. We yes. always followed. We yes. were the last ones to uh, move. <laughs> let me just interject here. Max Kaufman and uh, Philip Edelstein were Papa's partners in business at that time. Okay, that's real together. Record straight. And being together, and being in business together. And yeah. they went to work together daily. How would they go to work? Subway. Uh, yes, the subway was right. I they went up on the car line. Didn't or they, Uncle Penny had a car. Uncle Penny had a car. Uncle who? Penny. 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 Philip. Philip. Philip Edelstein. Edelstein. He was one of Grandpa's partners. Yes, brother he was a brother and partner. And partner. When did when did uh, Grandpa Eddie go into the smelting or junk business? Uh, he went into that uh, right after he was married to Grandma. Uh, wait, I think I can <laughs> do something better than that. He, when he came from <laughs> this no, isn't a Mom. Uh, yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> when he came from Europe, he headed right for Boston right. with his brother Aaron, and he had a sister, uh, English Divided. Deborah. Uh, anyway, uh, he didn't like living there. One had a farm, and his brother was a baker. And uh, he didn't stay there very long because he came right back, 
and uh, all his relatives were uh, junkmen. They were all mm -hmm. smelters. Just a minute. <laughs> Oh, uh, my grandma <laughs> started to go with grandma. What year was the that? The brothers. They were married. Um, they were married in 1912, so they must have gone together maybe 1911. Yes. Because Mo was married in 1913, and I was married in 1914. <laughs> what do you mean, Mo? <laughs> <laughs> I heard about it. Uh, what you, you said 1913? You were married? Mo. Mo. You were married. Born. Boy, no, you right, said right. Mary. Boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, um, uh, Grandma Fanny's relatives, the rich one, <laughs> uh, had a, a lady's clothing manufacturing business <laughs> that Grandma's brothers were in. Uncle Charlie worked there, Uncle Sam worked there, and Uncle Joe worked there. I don't remember yes, that. Uncle Sam, Sam he went right to Pittsfield. No, <laughs> Uncle Sam. <laughs> the other Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam. We had two Uncle Joes. <laughs> we did. That's true. Uh, Uncle did Sam went to Pittsfield uh, after he had been married <laughs> and I had been born. <laughs> Uncle Gimple went to South Plainfield. How he wound up there, I don't know. But uh, I want to go. This, this all evolved from the white paint. The apartment. Why? You, your original <laughs> question was, why did we move instead of painting, painting the apartment? Now, I don't think you. that was correct. <laughs> I, um, I'm sure I you disagree. got that from your mother somewhere along the line. That and was it. it. <laughs> I think your. That's what she told me. I think your mother. I think your mother's stories have to be longer <laughs> before they put up the air. Oh, did we always find a piano where we moved? Yes. Thank God for that one. <laughs> we always, had we always piano. left the piano and we, we, we found, found the piano. piano. <laughs> it was so expensive to move pianos. Right, right. They didn't believe them. And right. They had them in yeah. Mexico. Yeah. But we always rented an apartment because Grandpa Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was very unhandy around the house, and he never wanted the responsibility of being a landlord and having to to fix around the house. He he wasn't interested. He would never even put up a um, a curtain rod. No. So he he wanted to live in a rented apartment at all times. Let the landlord. But we be we bettered ourselves every time as every we went along. We yeah, bettered we ourselves. We've got a better apartment. It was always uh, upward mobility. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we did have two Uncle Joes because what's his name called himself? Uncle Joe. Oh. Uh, Uncle Joe and Uncle Kimball. It's irrelevant. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Who has it's, irrelevant. it's irrelevant to what we're discussing. <laughs> but it's interesting to have a mother who has two what? brothers. What's the next question? <laughs> <way? laughs> I forgot the last question. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll be what quiet. Was, what, what are your recollections of going to public school in Brooklyn in the 19, what, 20s and, and 30s is when you went to school? And they were they were very nice. Um, I started my public speaking year when I started was in 164. I can remember being the class speaker, and uh, you know each class had to put a play on uh, every week. A different uh, class had to put. I was in all the class plays. Uh, Mo, of course, went to Yeshiva on uh, 13th Avenue. Was the Yeshiva free? No, no, no. no. How much Very you expensive for those cheaper? days. It was. Well, my our parents had to put up a lot of the equivalent <coughs> of a, uh, a comparable uh, good day schools here, a private day private school, school yes. today. And I would, and I and so I would, did it. At that time, it they were in business, and they were. Uh, yeah, it was important to them that they're. The one so we, we all, Mo took violin lessons, I took piano lessons, I went to Hebrew school in the afternoon, and they they knew one thing they had to do. They education, education was it. arts, everything was uh, they, very. They meaningful. wanted us educated. Yes. I have a cute story about our mother. Uh, she uh, came from Europe. She she brought up her brothers in Europe. Her mother died very early, and she. She was really practically their mother in Europe. And then when she came here, she um, uh, didn't know how to read and write English. And as we, the children, got a little bit older, we all said, 
well, Mommy, you should read and write. She really wanted to learn. So her contention was always, when I'll go to school when I know how to write and read a little bit, then I'll go to school. <laughs> she always said that. I thought that was the cutest She had a private teacher come in. Read, yeah, but that yeah. was later on in life. But yeah. uh, she was always had that thing, how she wanted to read and write English. But uh, that was one of those Does uh, Lewis know that Grandma didn't have a sense of smell? Yes. Yeah. And yet she was immaculate. She could tell. She if, could tell if somebody stuck. <laughs> if there was garbage, she, she could she could she tell could if there tell was anything around that smell. smell. And we were always very cautious about the gas in yeah. the house. Because and she was extraordinarily clean, and she was extraordinarily careful that her children in the house should be cleaner than anybody yeah, else's because right. she didn't have a sense of smell. And, and something that I remember very distinctly, um, most immigrants, when they came from Europe, they brought their feather beds with them. The feather quilt, Peronis. Yes. Right. And uh, mostly, I think, all the immigrants that came at that time brought this with them. And she had that on her bed. Uh, many times I recall that she had it recovered put your hand and she put the uh, duck feathers in the bathtub so that they could, could be cleaned or something. I don't know what she did. Mm -hmm. I never yeah, saw it. She I cleaned them, what she she did, cleaned them she cleaned. and she would put new, them into new covers. But every time she made the bed, the bed always she stood against the wall I'm until sure we got into larger know. apartments when the bed was That's in the center right. of the room. Mm -hmm. She would take the broom handle mm -hmm. and she would go across right. the top of the bread, the bed and to smooth it out so that it shouldn't be lumpy or airy and spots and that it was even. That's how immaculate and, and such a perfectionist. It was unbelievable. Yes, she was. What year were you born? 1914. December 17, 1914. December 17. What, what would your earliest recollections be? Uh, one of my recollections was that um, World War One had ended. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, leaving an estimated 8.5 million people dead and some 21 million wounded. The actual peace document, known as the Treaty of Versailles, was not signed until six months later, on the 28th of June, 1919. Call hanging out the window uh, when they were burning uh, or carrying an effigy of uh, the Kaiser uh, through the streets, and everyone was banging uh, pots and pans because the war had ended. That's one of my earliest recollections. Then, of course, another thing uh, that um, was wiped out with the supermarkets and other markets, uh, we had street markets where the uh, peddlers would come with their push carts. This is in Borough Park? Yes, in Borough Park. There were several streets that you could buy your fruit and vegetables. Well, they also came in front of our door. I, I can remember them. Push carts? Them. No. They, uh, uh, they, well, they were tourists. They came with a thing. Oh, they used to go through, through the street. Down the street. Yes. And uh, uh, sell fruit and Sell their wares and yes. cry out apples, pears, yes. just like you've seen yes. stories about other uh, countries. Are there still guys who go through Brooklyn yelling high cash clothes? No. no. Oh, I remember that. Sure. They would come yeah. in the alley, and, yeah, yeah. yes, and... Um, what, what were they doing? Buying used buying clothes? Buying used yeah. clothes. Because mm -hmm. I can remember that. they growing yeah. up in Brooklyn myself. Yeah, right. They, they'd come up and, and eye cash clothes. And we also... Do you remember? Yeah.